Good day everyone, Trainer Max in the view. Thank you very much for joining me for this quick fix series. Today we're going to talk about the bench press on the bench. As always, I want to thank everyone who supports my channel. Thank you so much for all those kind words and encouragement you keep giving me. I really appreciate it. Also, I appreciate your super thanks, donations. Amazing guys, thank you. And my support angels. I thank everyone, thank you. Let's have a look at the typical bench press we all see at the gyms. So we see people do this here, light arch on the lower back or even flat, barbell lively, shoulder width or wider, and we go here down and we go up like this. Often the butt will come off a little bit or light arch will be staying there and that's fine. That's absolutely fine. In competitive powerlifting, even there is a technique when you really try to arch almost going into the bridge as much as possible. So first of all, it will stop the chest from going out because it's already out as much as it can. And secondly, it reduces the distance the barbell needs to cover on the way down and on the way up. So technically you're doing partial bench press. Kind of good, still counts. But today I want you to try a different technique for the bench press, the technique which is designed to utilize the full range of motion for the chest muscles so that we go into the full stretch and initiate the movement uh, from the full stretch without the rib cage going out, without the arch, without anything else, without shoulders collapsing. So a couple of complications here. Why the chest would typically go out? Why would we arch? Well, it's actually very simple. Once we go down, and we decided to press, the chest is attached to the rib cage and to the arm here. Whenever you're trying to engage the chest muscles, remember that any muscle pulls on both ends, on both ends of its attachment, because any muscle contracts to its midline. So the chest is a very powerful muscle. By contracting, it will also pull on the rib cage, and the rib cage will be pulled essentially like this up. And that incentivizes us, especially when the weight is heavy, to arch a lot. And often we will fight with the core, core in, but it still will be intuitive to go here or even on the toes. That's the first common thing. When, when, when we cannot secure the rib cage in the proper way, and that will let the chest take it up at all time, especially when the weight is heavy. The second dilemma is the wrists. When we grab the weight, the wrist would be typically uh, stretched like this so the barbell is not really resting in one line with the forearm but goes this way and when that's the case the forearm is stretched and when you go down that before the stretch in the forearm will incentivize the biceps to engage a little bit creating some unnecessary pull and your elbows will be collapsing close to the torso one like this and to press up you will be over line on the triceps we want to avoid this either the third common situation, when the shoulders are collapsing and start hurting, a lot of times during the bench press, you feel like nagging pain here, kind of pinching sensation on the left or on the right. It means that whenever the chest is pulling on the arm, it also takes the shoulder a little bit forward. That closes the shoulder. And remember, when the shoulder is closed, it means that the blade is collapsing forward. Collapsing forward blade hits the... Uh, the humerus, the upper arm bone, and physically damaging the connective uh, tissue here. And that's exactly what's happening. When you go down like this and press, the tension in the chest takes the shoulder forward, one collapse and pushing the shoulder this way. That feels kind of okay, but you rely on the triceps and you cannot engage a lot of uh, chest here simply because of the uncomfortable sensation or you might even uh, compromise the tendon of your biceps since the tendon of the biceps is growing and it attaches itself all the way here to the clavicle. Blade collapses forward, sinks into the uh, connective tissue of the biceps tendon, and that's how we have the impinged shoulders. So let's try to fix those three common things. Let's start with the spine. We want the spine neutral. Remember how we do neutral spine from my other videos? We're first of all engaging the rib cage in one, Rip cage in, core engaged. Now the upper spine muscles can pull the upper spine into the extension. Without core, they can't. One, two, great. Now the tailbone is not taken forward, but tailbone goes to the lower back. Two. So that's our neutral spine, where you're locking the spine between the upper spinal muscles, core muscles, 
uh, lower and middle back muscles. So now the spine is really, really locked. When the spine is locked, it will make it way more difficult for the chest to get the entire spine up. Because now locked spine means that all three segments of the spine, upper, middle, lower, can move, not even can, will move only at once as one piece. And see, when the spine is not neutral, for the chest, it's very easy to take only the upper spine into the arching like this, because the upper spine is not connected to the uh, lower, mid spine, lower spine. But when the uh, spine has a structure, when three pieces connected, for the chest to take the entire spine up, will be almost impossible. So by simply locking the spine in neutral position, even while lying down, rib cage in, upper spine extended, tailbone extended. Good, that tailbone extended will also open up your hips and will let you bring the legs a bit wider and under the bench, providing extra support for, for the balance. And now you press one and you emphasize the upper spine. Upper spine, rib cage, tailbone. Upper spine, rib cage, tailbone, good. And you're, by doing this, you will make sure that the ribcage will be way too hard to get off the bench. Of course, if the weight is very heavy, it will still happen a little bit, but it should be happening through the resistance of the upper spinal muscle, sorry, upper spinal, the entire muscle column trying to keep the spine in one piece. So that's how we solve dilemma number one. Dilemma number two, the wrist, that simple. Instead of holding the weight here, meaning that if I do this, the weight will not be sitting on the forearm. You're just trying to keep the wrist in a neutral position. Remember my video on neutral wrist? When these two knuckles try to escape the forearm so that we align this bone with this bone and bend it 90 degree a little bit. And that's how we do this. So here, one, just like this. So not too much forward, neutral, but definitely not stretching the forearms by the weight of the barbell. So the barbell should be sitting into the forearm, more or less. So that the forearm can deliver a nice press. One, that will stop your elbows from collapsing inwards. And if it's not collapsing inwards, that you still can use chest and don't have to rely on the triceps extension. So upper spine, rib cage, lower spine, uh, tailbone extension, wrists, and it's already better. One, two. One, two, see where my elbows are going naturally because I'm simply not doing this. One, two, one, and we press from here. Two, good. So we just solved the dilemma with the wrists and the dilemma with the shoulders. In order not to collapse the shoulders, we keep them open. How we keep the shoulders open? We're engaging the um, lower trapezius to pull the, um, the blades, the top of the blades. These guys diagonally down to the mid spine one, and you're pushing the armpits forward or slightly 45 degree away to activate serratus anterior, so that serratus will keep the shoulders a little bit more in tilted kind of back position. That will make sure that whenever the chest muscle is pulling on the arm here one, that will not collapse the shoulders forward since uh, since uh, now they're supported by the powerful lower trapezius and powerful serratus anterior muscles forward. So now you have the compensation for the pull of the chest. And because you do that, your chest is actually now more efficient with pulling on the upper arm. Since during the pull, the shoulder stays stable and the arm moves around the shoulder and not with the shoulder. And when the arm upper arm moves with the shoulder, it compromises the contractile ability of the chest the chest will stop contracting and eventually you will get stuck. Because you, the more you press, the more the shoulder going forward. You press shoulder forward. So that's why we have those deadline, uh, dead, uh, dead places when you just can't, no matter what you do, can't get the, the barbell up. So let's see what it, what, what it looks like here. We go here, upper spine, rib cage, tailbone, good. Wrists, neutral, good. Shoulders, open open good and now you're all set to do a nice bench press see where the bar is ending right in the middle of the sternum where it's supposed to be not here not here just naturally going down shoulders open now you're just pressing one 
chest muscles pulling on the arm, but now the uh, shoulders are not going forward, not collapsing. So we're avoiding the impingement and increasing the uh, contractile capacity, cont contractile force uh, ability to pull with, uh, with strength of the chest muscles. The chest muscles also can't take the rib cage into the, uh, uh, into the out position, sitting out. So we cannot arch the uh, lower back. For neutral spine, one, two, three, one, two, three. And that will make your bench press feel much more organic, much more controlled and more powerful. So that's as for the uh, technique, as, as for the body position, how to keep your body. Neutral spine, open shoulders, neutral wrists, all good. Now I want you to think slightly differently about how to produce the press with the arm. That's very important. Because typically we think that it's a bench press, it's about the chest muscles, and we know that triceps are engaged. Uh, but typically we focus on the chest, and that's not good. Have a look at this. So when you start thinking, okay, it's chest, I'm pushing the barbell up one. Well, you're missing the triceps a little bit. Because all focus is going on the chest. What happens in this way? Midway through here, one. The chest muscles ideally want always to bring the upper arm into this position, one here. That's the movement of the elbow. There is no elbow up, elbow moves in the semicircular trajectory to the middle of the body. One, that's the chest. And if you keep focusing on the chest all the time, given that your arms are tight, a lot of tightness here, one, you kind of get stuck here, you cannot press up, especially when it's heavy, especially when it's thread number seven. You get stuck here too much chest because we don't realize that tension we have in the arm actually stopping the forearm from extending because the biceps becomes uh, so tight since we're paying attention only to the chest and want to do this movement primarily. That's not good, so let's rethink it. I want you to think the following way. First, 50% of the movement you think that the chest pulling on the upper arm into this position. One, after you switch your focus and you're escaping the chest, you're placing your mind here into the triceps and thinking that the triceps is pulling the upper arm into the extension like this, one. So 50% chest, 50% triceps. Relax, go down. 50% your mind is telling your uh, chest muscles, pull on the upper arm, pull on the upper arm, upper arm, upper arm, upper arm. Abandon the upper arm, go into the triceps, on the triceps, one. And then it will be looking like this here. Here go chest, triceps, chest, triceps versus chest and chest, chest, more chest. You can go up because essentially you're pulling into the stick like this if you keep focusing on the chest. So 50% uh, up, you're giving up the chest and start thinking triceps. Chest, triceps, and that will make your bench press almost effortless up to some extent in combination with the, uh, with the good body alignment. Don't pursue the weight you cannot do with uh, a clean technique because we really want to expand the full range for the chest in cooperation with the triceps, uh, still being able to control the body alignment, the shoulder placement, the tailbone extension, so that we can build on this body awareness uh, in, the, uh, in the other skills. We can improve our handstand push-ups, our front lever, anything else, or regular life activity. So try to make sure that while you're doing the bench press, no matter what weight you're working with, you're always are capable of monitoring your body position, monitoring your, where your shoulders, paying attention to the cues, and so on and so forth. Otherwise, the weight for the sake of just Benching this weight, yes, you might finish it in somehow with the arch back and etc. Good for you, but you were not in control of the body. You developed a lot of bad habits. You cannot incorporate um, the same technique into the other exercises, other skills, and so on and so forth. So it's better to dial down a little bit and uh, do cleaner bench press for 10-15 reps than to do one, two reps with maximal weight, maybe occasionally once in a while to test your strength, yes. But we ideally want the strength and stamina of the muscles. Stamina means that you can do 10 or 15 in a very clean way.
that would be ideal for our other skills to build on this. And that's how you do the bench press. Now go try it uh, for yourself at your gym. Let me know how it went. Drop a comment. Otherwise, I'll see you in my next video. Thank you very much. Train your maxim. Bye-bye.